This and that, episode 88, and it is load shedding here on my place. It's hot, it's humid, and it's dark. Perfect environment for mushrooms, but we'll have to just push through this. In the meantime, the world is not standing still. And in this one, I'm going to mention a bit about the FTX thing. I wanted to make a full video on it, but then I decided there's so much out there, uh, I cannot add anything. And we'll talk about the pestilence, and a little bit about the Donbass, and there's a Warafak that you can just look at and puke. I want to start this one off again with an uh, art piece. This is also digital art and I'm not going to get into the uh, underlying potential interpretations of what for me. That is a nice image. It's a good, I like the image, I like the composition and the artist is really good. Eye candy. Look at it, smile, frown, whatever. That is what art does. It stimulates you to think. And then I'm going to get to this one. Now there's been many stories about 9-11 and ah, heaps of information, conflicting information, accusations, contra-accusations, whatever. I just saw this last night and I thought that could be something if it can be proven. The Israelis who worked at the World Trade Center were warned by the Israeli government to take the day off on 9-11. What the hell is that? And then we get to the FTX thing. Now my opinion on this is that I surely hope the Americans and the American authorities that are supposed to look after these things don't drop the ball on this one. Because this is actually a serious thing and it affected millions of people for the benefit of a few. And in this was the article where they, the, the, the guys pointed out that the main peanut in that packet has fled to South America. The former head of FTX who resigned in disgrace was the second largest donor to the Democrats in the 2022 midterm elections after Soros. That is one thing. But only look at his investments, top compiled here, shows that just the insolvency of FTX might have a much more blatant extent than the Lehman Brothers bankruptcy. All the companies Bankman Fried's fingers were in. At first sight unknown and inconspicuous, he might have been far up in the pyramid and deep down in the swamp. How they finance the midterms through money laundering will be funny if there is no money for Ukraine next week. The money washer went bust. His bankruptcy is therefore a catastrophic blow for the DS, whose extent is still unimaginable and it still feels like just a foreshock. Before the big one, that will finally drain the swamp, will definitely have a reason why Bankman Freud rushed off to Argentina yesterday, as quite a few did after losing World War II. Guys, this is, this is serious, but we can do nothing about it. The American authorities are supposed to do something about this. FTX the rumor is that money given by the U.S. government to Ukraine wasn't used to buy arms, but invested in crypto funds held at FTX, who then donated it to the Dem Democrats for their election funding. Like a laundry, but like I said, just a rumor. There is a lot of stories about this. And I, as I explained to my son last night, one of the things that we must not, forget. In the end, the Ukraine Central Bank allowed the conversion of FTX held crypto to Ukraine money. So the guys will get the crypto in, they walk into the bank, 
and they take money, real Ukrainian money, out. And now that FTX has collapsed, where does that bank go now? Let's wait and see. Joe Biden and Zelensky have been laundering money. Biden funded Ukraine, Ukraine funded FTX, FTX funded Democrats with millions. They impeached Trump for a phone call. They should escort Biden out of the office now and we need to cut ties with Ukraine immediately. And that is from Terence Williams. But I don't know what the Americans are going to do. Things that I have seen there, things go wrong in their country. Very wrong. And yet, they, it seems to me they just accept it. Because I don't know if they are being you know, suffering that they are punch drunk from all the corruption that comes out and potential issues. But I don't know. In my opinion, the Americans are in deep trouble and I don't know how they're going to manage this. And then we get to this one. This is deeply concerning, but it is from that crazy woman down there on that little island. The intelligence services have released booklets telling the public if they suspect friends or family are opposing government policies and pestilence measures to report them as it is a sign that they are terrorists. How the fuck is that? And what stuns me, the New Zealand public obviously takes it, accepts these things. The world has gone crazy. And then we've got this ridiculous thing from this guy. We all know how many of these things happened. And he made the statement, I do not give a fuck what happens to empty waters. The former Democrat congressional candidate who criticized anti-vaxxers died unexpectedly after bragging about taking his shots on social media. Is this poetic, is this poetic justice? <clears throat> then we get to this, and you need to look at the graphs. Uh, don't, don't miss the important facts there. Sweden, no lockdowns. New Zealand, zero pestilence. Australia, zero pestilence. Look at those figures there. Sweden, zero, basically zero. Look at how high the red line is in New Zealand and Australia. This is really scary stuff. And, but I have made peace with it. The people, the people is just accepting these things. And then more from this guy. Birth rates have mysteriously collapsed all over the world. Excess mortality has skyrocketed and is now higher than during the pandemic years. Scotland saw a shocking 123% spike in newborn deaths in September. This is not normal. Well, I would agree. And then there's more numbers here and I'm not going to read it. You can look at it. Look at those percentages. 24, 17, 16, 16. And this is scary stuff. And this is something that I picked up <coughs> on uh, Telegram and I looked at it and I followed it and checked. I don't know what is going on there. I can't get more information on it. Nuremberg Code sees doctor executed for giving the snake poison. And then there was one comment that I saw and the guy said, uh, Poster said, I checked this with Todd Callender. He says he has heard of this happening in Malaysia, also in Russia, and news of it being censored to avoid critical mass. I wouldn't be surprised. And then we get to China. Pestilence rules in China loosened as cases rise. Over 16,000 cases were recorded nationwide Monday the highest number since April as authorities ease restrictions in some cities to lighten the burden on people's everyday lives. China admits the extreme pestilence measures. Only three and over 100,000 close contacts test positive. China has just changed its anti-pandemic policy, which had been in place for three years. 
I don't know what is going on there. But I have said, I've got a suspicion that they are abusing this pestilence to run a masked sanction operation against America. And then James Melville came out with something interesting. Instead of governments having digital ID on us, perhaps we should have digital ID on them to track who they are meeting, who is lobbying them, and how they are spending our money. They don't own us, we own them. And that is a very valid post and that wishful thinking. And this is interesting, it's from Lavrov. We noted that Russia's Sputnik V was the world's first pestilence vaccine. Although the WHO and the European Commission deliberately hampered its registration, the vaccine has been proved effective over 95% and delivered to 70 countries. And important, it is a standard old school type of vaccine, not this fancy computer aided monstrosity. And this is interesting, there's Riley elections. The extreme right party whose leader objected to the pestilence passes got the highest parliament seats in history. The Liberal Left Party, whose leader was Health Minister and enforced the passes, is out of Parliament for the first time in history. That is interesting. And then there's this from Tew. What you should really take away from all of this mess is that the same people that sold you the pestilence story and then beat you up in the streets because you didn't want to take any poison are the same people telling you that they are saving democracy in Ukraine from the, well, you can think about that, but that is actually the truth. It's the same crowd that is driving the narrative and the agendas. And then this was, I was quite intrigued when I read this one. I read a thread about how zero COVID policy in China has also prepared them for biological war. If, say, some Boston, Boston lab accidentally leaks an 80% kill rate pathogen, only China has hope of managing it. Chilling thought, but completely valid. And that made me think a lot. Think about it. You've seen many articles about what happened in China and what is happening there. Look at that. And then just imagine that scenario if they should be subjected to a biological attack. They will most probably, most of them will survive. And then we've got this. The common cold has been rebranded. The weather has been rebranded. Truth and science have been rebranded. Gender has been rebranded and they plan to rebrand us next. They want us to be given a QR code, a carbon credit footprint, a digital currency and a digital leash. Take note of that. Because that is very, very true. And then I've got you this little image from the Donbass for you. This is what happened in Crimea. Just look at the two images. And I have mentioned it elsewhere that I listened to an interview where the person said that in all the years since the Soviet Union pulled out of Ukraine and that very little infrastructure development was done there. And then we have this, look at it, this is what the Western taxpayers are financing. Donetsk was hit hard last night with American missiles on Russian Federation land. Building caught fire and streets covered in rubble. It is time to raise the level of the response. And that is the station building in Donetsk city. This is ridiculous, but from what I can see, Zelensky is running out of rope and things are going to turn sour from very quickly. I have made, I did a skid mark way back in April where I said that guy is going to wake up one morning and find out he has gone past his cell by date. The moment the West can't use him anymore, he's done. Look at this missile thing into Poland. He was now rebuked by a few major Western officials. And uh, I personally think his time is running out. 
And then we've got this from Eva Bartlett. It is a normal cemetery. I will, and this was in uh, uh, the response to the BBC that posted, The agony of not knowing as Mariupol mass burial sites grow. Now that BBC has been proven to be the main generator for fake news in the West. It is, it is a normal, Eva Bartlett, she's there in the Donbass and she is, a, she is a journalist from Canada. It is a normal cemetery. I went there yesterday. No security stopped me. No security there. Do you think if there was some mass burial site, random people like me and a taxi driver could just walk around as we did? This is the Manhash Mangush hoax all over again. And then she continues, While I was there, an older couple came to pay their respects to their grandchild, planting flowers, leaving her necklace and toys saying goodbye. Journalist I met there explained some bodies had been exhumed from where they were initially buried and moved to this cemetery. That shit in the Ukraine, it is really, something must be done to stop that. But that, as long as that regime sits in Kiev, nothing will change. And then we get to that what a fuck moment, and I don't have much to say. I have mentioned this incident previously. Just look at that. That's now the Miss Greater Something. A thing with a dick. I cannot understand how the West has gone so fucking bananas. And on that note, please hit me with a like and a subscribe and share the thing. Thank you for your support.